welcome back. The beginning of this week's portion we read about the mitzvah of Shemitah, the commandment to ensure that farmers in Israel rested their land on the seventh year, the sabbatical year. The Torah tells us that when Kisavoyu El Haoret, when you come into the land, Asheranino Senachem, that I give you, the land shall observe a Sabbath rest for Hashem. A Sabbath rest for Hashem, Shabbos la Hashem, a Sabbath rest for Hashem, that doesn't mean, of course, that Hashem, God, is going to rest. And in fact, the great biblical commentator Rashi, he comments on this particular verse, on these couple of words, Shabbos la Hashem, a Sabbath rest for Hashem, and says that in fact, he clarifies L'Shem Hashem. He says it should be for the sake, for the name of Hashem. And he explains by continuing to say that this was just like it was by the first Shabbos of creation. K'Shem Shenema B'Shabbos Bereshis as it is said with the Shabbos by creation. What is the connection between Shemitah, the Sabbath, the sabbatical year, and the Shabbos of creation? What Rashi is clarifying here is that the concept of the Shabbos for creation, which means that we're immersed in our work six days a week. What is the purpose of Shabbos? The purpose of Shabbos is to come closer to Hashem. We're immersed in our work six days a week and Shabbos is a spiritual rejuvenation. We should spend the day not simply resting from work, but praying, by studying, doing things that make us, bring us closer to Hashem. He says exactly the same thing, therefore, is with the Shemitah year. It shouldn't simply be a year that you sit, sit with your feet up doing nothing, but rather the time that you now have free should be utilized to bring us closer to God, closer to Hashem, just like a regular Shabbos weekday is meant to bring us closer to Hashem. So Shabbos la Hashem, when it says for Hashem, it means for the sake of Hashem that the time should be utilized to bring us closer to Hashem, to have a spiritual rejuvenation so that when we go through the week we'll be energized by that to do things that we don't usually have time during the week to do, to daven as long as we usually do, which is why of course prayers are longer on Shabbos morning than on a regular morning day because we're not working and so on and so forth. And therefore both Shabbos and Shemitah are connected in that concept of rest to bring us closer to Hashem, not simply to stop everything that we are doing. After telling us about the Shemitah year, it then tells us about the Jubilee year. The Jubilee year is the Yovel, that's where the word Jubilee comes from, the Hebrew of Yovel, which is every 50 years. After seven cycles of seven Shemitahs, you have a 50th year. Now what happened in the Yovel was that everything reverted back to its original state, to its original owners. Land went back to their original owners. People, if they were in, had sold themselves a slave, they were then free. And in fact, the person's value would depend on how many years are left to the oval. It's a bit like a leasehold as opposed to a freehold. And this is what happened. And Hashem says, the Torah tells us, that the land is not allowed to be sold, sold in perpetuity. You can't sell a person a land forever. You can't give them a freehold in the land of, of Israel. Why? Because Vaharetz says the Torah, Vaharetz loisimachelitz misus. The land shall not be sold in perpetuity, and Hashem gives us two reasons. Ki li ha'aret, firstly, because the, for the land is mine, but then also it says, Ki gerim shavim atem imodi, for you are sojourners and residents with me. You are sojourners and residents with me. What does that actually mean? Why does that give a reason as to the land? Well, ultimately it means that the land doesn't belong to us. The land belongs to Hashem. It's not us ours to sell, it's also not ours to give away. And so, the Torah says, Ki gerim shavim atem imadi, you are like sojourners and residents with me. We, we have this relationship with Hashem, where it's one or the other. Hashem is saying as follows, if you are like sojourners in this world, you understand that this is a temporary life, that you have to, you're on a journey to somewhere else, and you have to make the most of every moment that we have, then I will be with you like a resident, like a toshav, like a resident. I will be constantly with you wherever you are. However, however, if you feel like a resident, i.e. you're comfortable, you're happy, you're not going to be doing what you should really be doing in this world, to utilize the time to sanctify our lives and our places for the sake of Hashem, 
says Hashem, I will be like a ger, I will be like a sojourner, I won't be with you the whole time. It's one or the other. We can't be both. Ki gerim atem imadi. You and us, you and, uh, and, and me, sorry, Hashem is saying, you, the Jewish people and I, are, have this relationship of sojourners and residents. If you are one, I am the other. If you're a sojourner, I will be a resident and be with you the whole time. If you are a resident, you feel too comfortable and you don't live a proper life, a, a proper Torah life, then I will be a sojourner, I won't be with you the whole time, I will be temporary. That's a very powerful insight into that particular aspect of the Jubilee year. And then finally we uh, have later on in the, in the portion the prohibition against charging interest. Charging interest. The Torah tells us that ultimately Al-Tikach Me'etoi Neshech V'Sarbis uh, one is not allowed to um, uh, take from him, do not take from him interest and increase. Do not take from him interest and increase. And then we are told at the end of the verse, Vechei Ochicha Imach. That um, uh, your brother, let your brother live with you. Vechei Ochicha Imach, let your brother live with you. What does this mean, let your brother bite? How does interest connect to living with you? Well, our rabbis tell us that the prohibition against charging interest is so significant that if a person does charge interest, then when it comes to Tchiyas HaMesia, when it comes to the resurrection of the dead, that person is not going to be resurrected. That's how powerful and such a significant prohibition it is. And in fact, there are two people are at fault. We're told that both the lender and the borrower, the one that charges interest and the one that borrows on interest, both of them get punished because the borrower also is not allowed to let the lender charge interest He's not allowed to say, okay, you know what, I allow you to charge interest. Both of them are at fault. And that's what the Torah is telling us, v'chei, not v'chai. Usually we know life is chai, l'chayim. Here the vowel is a seirate v'chei. Chei means everlasting life. If you do not charge interest and increase, then v'chei or chichoimoch, you and your brother, both you, the lender and the borrower, will live an everlasting life, will be resurrected. But if not, then sadly our rabbis tell us from this they understand that there won't be Tchiyas HaMesim which is a very powerful thing and in fact we have this somewhere else we have this by Joseph you may remember that Joseph said to his brothers let Paro live if you do not um, uh, it, sorry Paro uh, I'm swearing by Paro's life he says for, if you go out of here this is when the brothers came to him and he said you're not going to leave Egypt Paro did live and he and the brothers did leave Egypt does that mean that Joseph was telling a lie? No. It says not chai parai. Chai. Chai means everlasting life. Parai was not going to have everlasting life in the world to come and be resurrected. And therefore Joseph was very careful in what he said to, because at the time they didn't know who he was and he was saying to them, I'm swearing by the life of Parai, but that doesn't mean life in this world, it means by the life in the world in the world to come. But ultimately we have this prohibition with regard to interest because we all are meant to help each other out. By charging interest, money that ultimately God gave to us, we are there, it's there to help, God gave it to us on condition to help our fellow brother if they need money to help them out. Thank you for watching and as ever, do share it with your family and friends and I look forward to sharing with you more insights next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.